for me, a bike is just a perfect tool to, to go further. Riding here every day is just like, you can go so far, so high, so quick. Just what my vision of biking is, is just like technical riding to go in places you can't go the other way. My name is Glenn MacArthur, I'm 21 years old. I was born in Briançon in the Hauts Alpes and I uh, live in the Kera Natural Park. I've always been living here, forever. I found it super fun. It's, I've always been just outside, like skiing a lot. And then I switched to bike racing when I was about 12, I think. So uh, I ride alone a lot. And I just really like to like, you go, you pedal out for two hours and you just sit up there and, and you're just alone. I like the natural part of it and just everything feels really big. Everyone in the car, I think, just look up to, to the Viso because it's just the highest mountain in the surrounding, just higher than everything else. So there was just always this famous loop going around it. So I just wanted to, I had this idea of setting a new record on my bike. Most of the Kira is pretty mellow riding, like super flowy. But in the Viso area, just because everything is so much higher, there's just no trees, no, uh, no vegetation. So just like super rugged terrain, super remote. There's absolutely no bike trails. It's just like super natural, mainly hiking or really ancient Roman trails and stuff like that. So you just have to make it work yourself. For Giro del Viso, like on the 60K, it's like 10 kilometers of like mellow riding and then it's basically a 50 kilometer long rock garden. <laughs> so I did like a few rides in the area before going there, just to check how Okay, just if it was doable at first. And when I saw that I had fun riding it and it was just a really good loop and it was just working. So I thought it was a good idea. So I just went for it from there. Set up. Start. On est parti. À tout à l'heure. Because the beginning is the lowest part, it's like where the terrain is the most like mellow. On the 60k, it's like 10 kilometers of mellow riding, and then it's basically a 50 kilometer long rock garden. I started from Le Chalet. It's like the last village where people live before Italy. It's the lowest point of the route. And from there, you have a huge first climb to the Col de la Traversette. I did the first climb up to Col de la Traversette. That's uh, the highest point at 2,950 meter high. And then I dropped in Italy uh, for the first big descent. Of course, fairly technical, but it's, the hard part is that the top is really exposed. You're just not allowed to, to crash. Là, t'as pas le droit de tomber. Oh, 
Bro. Bon, ça va pas les Italiens. Ils nous préviennent euh, que c'est pas facile. Mais je crois que là j'avais pas besoin d'un panneau quoi. C'est roulant, c'est roulant. I did the second time, uh, which was maybe the most unrideable part of the loop. It was like an ancient glacier, so it's just huge boulders every, everywhere. So there's no proper trail, it's just like painting marks. So I just had to follow that and go up there. The refuge is a little vélo, the plaine du Pau là bas, and the fountain. Je me suis arrêté, c'est le seul point d'eau de sur tout le tour. Ça fait 3h40 que je suis parti. Et je fais le bambou. La descente euh, du San Cafredo. Oh. Je pense c'est vraiment une des descentes les plus dures que je connaisse. Ça frappe, ça frappe. Ça en finit pas. En plus, elle fait 1100 mètres de long. Ça va vraiment chauffer les avant-bras. C'est un gros morceau qui est derrière. J'ai rien cassé. Ça, c'est cool. From the bottom of that, I went to the last climb, which was almost the biggest climb of the, of the loop, up to Col Valent, at 2,800 meters high. I'm in the last mount, the mount of Col Valent. It can go well for 600-700 meters, that was cool. It makes me turn a little bit of the legs. And now I have the last big portage of 300 meters. The king is just there. And the first 600-700 meters of Climbing were pretty mellow. I did pedal quite a lot on the bike, and then the last bit was just a hiker bike for like 400 meter high. It was just super steep, and at the end of the of the loop, so that that was the hardest bit I think. And then from there, you I did drop back into France. That was a border. And the first kilometer was super rough, and then it's just one of the best descent days. Like it's a thousand meter, 15 kilometers. Long, just like a super, super nice way to finish all the way back to the Shalp. Allez, les gars, on se retrouve en bas. Quite used to that feeling of just going for a big day, but there I had a bit of the. Of course, I had the time in mind, so I had to to push a bit. It felt alright. I, I set my pace from the beginning and managed to hold it the whole the whole loop. So yeah, I was quite happy with that. I've been racing bikes for like nine seasons now, so I just really like the adversity and pushing myself and going as fast as possible. Doing like these records or fastest known time and stuff is just the combination of my racing stuff and the, mount the mountain riding I do every day. Riding bikes in the mountains is just what I do. So I like to do that for, for as long as I can really, yeah.